Fate comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You're listening to The Moment of Power with Azano Eddie Thompson. Daily audio devotions to energize your day presented by the Advent Hero Ministries. Our moment of power topic today is experience versus scripture part 7. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the walking of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they may be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 8 to 11. What Paul describes here is a deception of the last days that people shall fall into and they fall into this deception because they make the deadly mistake of putting manifestations, putting experiences, putting what their eyes could see and things they could feel above the truth of scripture, above the word of God. They are deceived because they received not the love of the truth because they followed the manifestations of satanic power they followed the ministry of deceivers of false apostles and false prophets who use the name of jesus but are not really really the servants of jesus they come with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth it's going to be a very terrible time of deception in these last days. It's already been played out and millions have been deceived right away. And the problem is where they get it wrong is because they begin to believe the testimonies and the so-called manifestation of these false prophets and false teachers. And they put down, they downplay the word of God, the scriptures. And that's exactly what happened in the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 13, when a young man, a man of God, was sent. This man of God was sent from Judah to rebuke Jeroboam, who was in apostasy. He was practicing idolatry. He was the leader of Israel at that time. God gave this man of God boldness to rebuke iniquity. And when his work was done, God asked him, to go back without receiving anything, to go in another way, not the way in which he came. He obeyed thus far until a jealous old man of God. I don't know why God had bypassed this old man to use the young man from Judah. Perhaps he was compromising, so God decided to bypass him. So he got jealous that he was not used and he ran after the man of God and he tried to persuade the man of God against the word of God. The man of God had explained to him that the word of God had told him not to eat or drink anything in this mission, not to receive anything in this mission and to just go back home. Perhaps he was not even a false prophet in the first place, but like I said, he may have derailed. So God was not using him at the moment in verse 18 of first kings chapter 3 in order to persuade the man of god to follow him the bible says and we read he said unto him i am a prophet also as thou art and an angel speak unto me by the word of the lord saying bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and drink water but he lied unto him End of quote. The Bible says that the young man was persuaded by this claim that this angel had visited the senior prophet, that this angel had visited him and had given him word 
from the Lord. Now, he needed to have known that the Lord will not contradict himself. There are people who are claiming the leading of the Spirit today. But obviously, what they are led to do is contrary to the Word of God, to the Bible. In such cases, God's children should know that the Word of God is being contradicted and they should know that another spirit is leading. They should not exchange an experience that contradicts the scripture, that contradicts the word of God for the truth that they know from the word of God. Some people are pitching their experiences or the experiences, the claimed experiences of others for truth. It's a very, very important thing that we need to know in these last days. Because in these last days, the deceptions will be very, very strong. For instance, we read in Revelation chapter 13, verses 13 and 14, talking about the second beast and how he's going to manifest his power to move the world to follow the papal beast, the papal first beast of revelation 13 and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did leave. End of quote. When the second beast, falling American Protestantism, begins to work these miracles, those who base their faith on experience will follow this false prophet because that's what revelation chapter 19 calls this beast that deceived people to receive the mark of the beast revelation 19 20 quote and the beast was taken and with him the false prophets that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast into the lake of fire burning with brimstone end of quote so in the last days the deception will be very strong and demons will be involved using the name of christ revelation 16 13 and 14 quote and i saw three unclean frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils walking miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. What a time it will be. Today, these things are happening. These things are beginning to happen, but God would not want his people to be deceived. He wants you to study the Bible and he wants your experience to harmonize with the Bible. He doesn't want you to accept any experience, any doctrine, any miracle, any manifestation that does not agree with the Bible. For instance, if somebody is claiming to work miracles or do some manifestations of the supernatural, but he is not leading you to the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus. That ministry, that minister, that prophet is not of God, it's of the devil. He's leading you astray. If he does not lead you to an experience of repentance and forgiveness from God and the keeping, the loving obedience, keeping of the commandment of God, then that ministry is from the pit of hell and it's not leading you to Christ. I read to you from Acts of the Apostles, page 266, paragraph 2, quote, Men cannot with impunity reject the warnings that God in mercy sends them. From those who persist in turning from the warnings, God withdraws his spirit, leaving them to the deceptions that they love. End of quote. 
this is speaking to our text for today that God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. If you continue to follow emotionalism, to follow the experiences that are not backed up by scripture, God will have no other choice than to leave you to yourself. And it's a very terrible situation when God leaves you to the deceptions of devils. Your end will be like the man of God in 1 Kings 13 that followed the prophet. But today God is calling you to renew your love for his word, to uphold his word. Remember that God says, I will exalt my word above my throne. What a God we serve. God's word cannot be trifled with. We will have experiences. We will have manifestations. We will have miracles. But they must be in harmony with the word of God. Not like that of the man of God in 1 Kings 13 that had to contradict the word that God had given him to follow the false prophets to perdition. God is warning you today. Don't follow miracles at the expense of truth. Don't follow manifestations of the supernatural, sacrificing the truth. Love the truth of the word of God and the genuine experiences will follow. Our Father in heaven, we come to you today. We worship you. There is none holy as you. We pray that you give us your anointing. Give us the Holy Spirit so that we will follow all truth. Your word says that the Holy Spirit that you will give us will lead us into all truth. Lord, the spirit that leads away from truth, take away from us today. That is the spirit that comes with manifestations and try to make us to think that these experiences apart from the truth will save us. Trying to lead us into the experience that those who will at last say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not walked, done many miracles in your name? And you will eventually say to them, I do not know you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Because these people do not follow your truth. They do not do your will. So save us from this mighty deception and help us and bless us today. Let your blessing rest upon us. Provide for us today. No matter the economic situation, the hardship, let your children, like the time of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, let them have what to eat, what to drink, and the clothes on their body. Let them have breakthrough in whatever they do, whether in their academy. Let the listener today be blessed and escape the deceptions of Satan. Thank you for hearing us, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.